Okay, welcome back. This is my ELM test prep series. I'm James S. And we're looking at some special questions or, or special problems again here. The question here might be solve for x. What does x equal? Well, when we look at this initially, we see x buried here and x buried here, and, and it looks like it's going to take a whole lot of time to do it. But let's let's use our little trick that we learned where we can take a fraction on one side and a fraction on the other side and just flip both fractions. Well, it doesn't look quite so daunting with the x's on top. So now I can see that, well, to get rid of this 5, I'm going to multiply this side by 5. To get rid of this 2, I'm going to multiply this side by 2. So since I multiplied this side by 2, I'm going to have to multiply this side by 2. And since I multiplied here by 5, I will multiply here by 5. Well, over on this side, the 5 cancels the 5, the 2 cancels the 2. And now I have 2 times x minus 3 here equal to, I'm just going to take that out of there, I have 5 times this quantity here, 2x plus 1. All right, so already this looks a lot simpler. Well, now I'm just going to distribute here because I have two terms separated by a negative. So I'm going to get 2x minus 6 equals this over here, 5 distributed here and here. That will be 10x plus 5. Well, now I want my x's on one side and the numbers on the other. So I'm going to subtract 10x, oops, not with that pen, I'm not, minus 10x here, and I'm going to subtract 10x over here. Well, I'm going to undo this minus 6 with a plus 6. So I'm going to add 6 over here. Well, this will go to 0 here, and this will go to 0 here. So 2x take away 10x is their opposite sign, so take the difference is 8x, and the larger is negative. And over here, they're the same side, so I'll just add them, and I'll get 11. Well, my final step here for solving for x, of course, is to divide both sides by minus 8. Minus 8 divided by minus 8 is just 1, and so 1x is just x. And I have my final answer. Now, originally it looked very complicated because our x was in the denominator. But what I did was I just flipped both sides. Since both sides were fractions, I just flipped them. Well, let's look and see if that's legal. 1 half equals 1 half. Well, that side equals that side. So if we flip both sides, 2 over 1 equals 2 over 1, so 2 equals 2. Well, that's true also. Now, certainly, in terms of a number, if we flip a number uh, on both sides, it looks like we've somehow cheated. But in terms of just a pure number, yes, we are going to get a different answer out of that. But in terms of letters, since we're solving letters, I'm going to do a simple one here. 2 over x equals um, 3 over x. Well, I could just flip this and call this x over 2 and 3, or x over 3 on this side. Let's see. What would be another way of doing this? Well, if I wanted to undo this division by x here, I could multiply this side by x, right? And if I multiply that side by x, I multiply this side by x. And then the x's would cancel, and the x would cancel here, and I'd have 2 equals 3. Well, 2 does not equal 3. So the initial statement that 2 over x equals 3 over x, well, that was obvious that those two were in no way the same. So I still ended up being untrue. 
Uh, let's see if I can come up with something. Let's say we have 2 over x minus 2 equals 3 over x. So in this case, we're still looking for a value of x that would make this true. Um, well, if this were 4, and I took away 2, that'd be 2 over 2. And if this, this is 4, that'd be 3 over 4, and, and so 1 would not equal 3 fourths. But let's see what we do. Let's multiply this side by x and this side by x. Well, this will cancel over here, but it will not cancel here. So I just have 2x over that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 2, which will cancel that, and this will be x minus 2 times that. So now I have 2x equals 3 times x minus 2. Well, I'm going to distribute this. 3x minus 6 equals 2x. I bring the 3x, so I subtract 3x from this side to undo that. So I have a minus x equals, oops, sorry about that. Yeah, minus x equals minus 6, and then the, so. Let's go back to our original problem. If we put a 6 in here, take away 2, that would be 2 over 4 would be 1 half. And I put a 6 in here, 3 over 6 would in fact be 1 half. And so 1 half would equal 1 half. So our solution method here worked. Well, let's go back and do the same thing by flipping. Now, we had to do a lot of multiplying and manipulating around here to get that answer. So let's try the same problem. And we're just going to flip both sides. So this becomes x minus 2 over 2. This becomes x over 3. Well, we said the other time we said x equals 6 to make it true. So this time I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 and both sides by 2. And if I multiply this by 3, I have to multiply this by 3. If I multiply by 2 here, I have to multiply by 2 here. So the 3's cancel, the 2's cancel. I then get 3 times x minus 2. And you're probably already seeing that I'm ending up with the same thing. 2x, and then I'll get 3x minus 6 equals 2x. And if I subtract 2 from here, I'll get take 2x away from this side and 2x over here. Then I'll add 6 to get rid of that. So that makes it a 6. So then I've got 3x take away 2x is just x. And it equals 6, and sure enough, I got the same answer. So the fact that I flipped this, it didn't look like I was doing anything legal. It looked kind of just hocus-pocus magic and wave your arms and, and hope for the best. But it was a valid operation. It's just that we did it a different way. We could have multiplied both sides by that and got those values. Now, of course, another alternate way of looking at this, and we talked about this in one of the other videos. I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit. 2 over x minus 2, is that what I had? Equals 3 over x. Well, in one of the other videos I said, well, we could just take this denominator, cross multiply it up there. Take this denominator and cross multiply it to the other side. So then I get 2x equals 3 times x minus 2, and already you can see I'm back there. Notice how quickly this occurred. I didn't have to flip. I didn't have to do a lot of multiplying. Essentially, I did multiply. I multiplied both sides by opposite, but it dropped out. It looks very clean when I do this. Take this quantity, cross multiply it up here to this side. Take this quantity, cross multiply up to that side. It's sort of a shortcut. We went through the long cut on this, and now we're seeing the shortcut method. And again, we'll get 3x minus 6 equals 2x. 
and we'll find our answer the same. So those are three different ways of doing that kind of a problem. They look initially very complicated, but with a couple little tricks, you can get through it. Uh, now, whichever one you like the best, that's the one I would learn. I would learn that and stay with it. Use it uh, to whichever method you want. Now, of course, if you don't have a denominator on both sides, then you create one. Anything divided by 1 is still itself. So I turn an A into a fraction simply by dividing by 1. All right. Well, we've run our clock out. I hope that was helpful. This is another episode in the continuing saga of the ELM uh, prep series. I'm James. Have a good day.